Hello, this is Jitte Wagen and this is the fourth and final video uh, in a series of videos in which I will be introducing ArcGIS 10.7.1. And in this video I will treat a couple of subjects that have to do with uh, basically designing and reusing uh, elements of the map um, in, in the form of layer styles and templates. Okay, so the first thing I want to show is how you can save a layer style and how you can um, copy that onto another layer. Okay, now I want to demonstrate this by uh, dealing with this uh, our AHN file, so our elevation data. And in order to uh, to get into it, we'll go into the properties of this uh, file and uh, hit the symbology tab. And what's interesting here. Um, what I want to show is that you can, in fact, if you have a specific color ramp selected, um, you can um, actually change this color ramp. So if I have this color ramp and I can go in, right click on it and go into the properties, you can see uh, you come into this edit color ramp menu. Um, we can see here that this color ramp um, is basically built up of seven different algorithmic uh, color ramps. If we click on them, we can change their order using the, uh, the arrows over here. What we can do is we can ask for the properties of a single one. Um, we can change the property. So we could say, well, I actually do not want this white, but I want to go to this, uh, this black. Um, and, and what we can, can furthermore do, we can change the, the algorithm and we can add or remove uh, new parts. So uh, we can add a random color ramp, multi part preset, or another algorithmic color ramp. And if I would do that, I could change its properties and then say, well, I want to go from black um, again to a color that hasn't been used here, which is quite difficult with this particular color ramp. But um, so I think, I mean, this is not a course on designing color ramps. I'm just demonstrating the principle. So with a bit of creativity and imagination and going back and forth and looking at the effect of your designs on the visualization of your raster, you can make, um, you can optimize uh, color ramps to your liking, uh, either uh, aesthetical, uh, but also um, uh, for your specific uh, uh, visualization and analysis purposes. So if I, let's say that I'm very happy with this one and I want to be able to reuse it, I right click again on it and I will hit save to style. And I can do it, save it, I will give it a name and I will say this uh, color red jitter. And I will click OK. So now first of all, it is applied now. So you can see this, uh, this weird um, piece of the color ramp going from right to black to, uh, to pink. Uh, and what I basically did, I saved this color ramp into our styles. Now I will come back to the style manager in a moment. But the, the interesting thing is that we can now use this color ramp for other layers. Uh, and actually we can use now uh, this color ramp for any new project that we will start up because it will be based on this, uh, on, on the style. Um, presets that we have. Now, in order to demonstrate this principle, we'll go to the uh, the larger map sheet, and I can click on the properties of the larger edge and data sheet. I hit this selection, and I can go for my designed uh, color ramp. So I click OK, and I uh, and now I'm using it as well. For uh, for the larger age and sheet. Now, what we can see here, however, is again is is yet uh, another issue, and um, because the they still are not uh, looking quite the same. Now, the reason for this is quite obvious, um, because the um, value range of both these uh, files is quite different. So we have our uh, our uh, smaller area, um, our, our cut out uh, age and data, which uh, has only a, an altitude range from 
7.6 to 14.7 uh, meters above sea level whereas the larger sheet of course has higher and lower extremes so we have the the altitude goes from 5.5 to 21.7 uh, meters above sea level so since the color values in the color ramp are stretched over this total range you can imagine that for the larger sheet the same colors have to bridge uh, a larger range of values so they get stretched out much more and this is why um, we have a very different visualization here um, they just uh, the uh, of course the, uh, the cut out has much more detail um, through the different colors that are attributed because they have just uh, much much less variation to offer with uh, with much more um, colors okay so a solution for this would be to work with a layer file so what you can do is in ArcGIS we can um, right click on uh, agent 3 and we can uh, select the option save as layer file now what does it do uh, I already made one so I would be overwriting in this case what does this do um, the layer file actually stores all the uh, manipulations and uh, visualizations uh, etc that you apply to your uh, shape file in this case uh, I mean raster file in this case um, so it does not store the data itself it only stores uh, in, in this case the most important thing of course uh, for example the symbology of this uh, of this layer now in this sense it is actually analogous to how a project file the, the .mxd file extension of RTS projects saves uh, pointers to source files and, and collections and symbologies etc but not the data itself uh, this is um, actually the same thing but then only referring to a single layer um, and this is very useful because you can save this and you can uh, reapply it um, and make sure that you that you are actually using the same symbology so to, to demonstrate this, I will um, go into the, uh, the raster file again. Uh, what I will do now, I will set the minimum and maximum again. I will set 11 and 8, which we found to be quite optimal. Uh, we will say OK. Now we can see here the same um, possibilities to save and to, uh, to open um, the, uh, the 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 layer information. Um, let's save it as a layer file now. Yes. If we would now go into the uh, HN sheet from the whole area, we click on import. Now you can see here that we could also just have uh, selected the, uh, the file directly because you get here. In the symbology, uh, in port symbology uh, menu, you can get all the layers that you have currently in your project. But obvi obviously, there are benefits to having separate layer styles, uh, files uh, with styles uh, saved to your hard disk. Um, but to demonstrate the principle, I will just open it, add, click OK, and now you can see that color ramp is still here. It's actually the uh, copied but because it was already set to the same uh, we're not seeing that and we now also have the uh, stretch type and the uh, values uh, edited um, and so if we uh, hit ok now we can see that indeed we have the uh, same data uh, with the same uh, classification so the same colors attributed to the same uh, Altitudes. The only difference uh, that, that you can see is that uh, from the sheet that we downloaded, uh, buildings and other um, information has been removed, whereas um, in the uh, in the sheet in the HN3 data that we had within our project, this has not been uh, been done in the same way. So um, yeah, this is the only difference that you're seeing. And, and in this case, remember that for now, um, this is okay, because we have now, if, if we would just be interested in um, 
visualizing direct context, uh, the direct environment, um, the same uh, with, with the same color ramp. But if we zoom out, we can uh, see that we have quite large patches of um, of white and pink values, and that is because, of course, the uh, the edge and sheet. Uh, is clipped on on both ends because all the values uh, higher than 11 meters above sea level are now falling into the category uh, with the uh, pink color and on the lower end everything below 8 meters so maybe um, you could also think that if you want to have a similar um, symbology a similar color uh, distribution set for all um, all bits of LiDAR of age and data that you import into your project if you want to just have a default visualization no matter what the purpose it, it would be best to get a set the minimum and the maximum to the minimum and the maximum values uh, for all possible sheets in um, covering the Dutch territory so you uh, you stretch it up the color ramp along the, uh, the the largest range of possible altitude values and then you are sure to always have the same uh, visualization <coughs> okay now so as I mentioned uh, you can do the same thing with uh, with vector data uh, I won't go through the whole process but uh, just to show it uh, properties of this vector layer um, and here we have Top of the screen, draw categories using one value, one field, categories using value socialization. Then click, you can click on import, and then you can see I can import symbology from another layer in the map or another layer file. And there's a, a, something like a .ADL file, which is quite old version of, uh, of RGS software. Um, and the interesting thing here is also to note that you can either um, import just the symbols you can also import just the classification or you can import the complete symbolism but if you would, would want the same set of colors for example uh, but you want to, to classify your data differently uh, you can also do that uh, using this um, this import function now and then as a final thing about uh, saving layer files um, you may just want to uh, store the data the, the layer file but also include the data so if you would for example uh, want to send your uh, layer your your shape file to a colleague in, in and point something out that you that you made very clear by adjusting the symbology in a way that it, it comes out very uh, very well um, so you, you do not just want to send someone um, the, the shape file and you can also not just send someone the layer file you could of course send them both but another way to go about this is to uh, create a layer package and then you create a single file that contains both the data and the information that we store in the layer files so the colors and symbology and the classifications and what so that's also um, an, an, an interesting thing to know about how you can uh, work with the layers and the definitions when it comes to uh, well, the most important part of visualization of the information. Okay, so then to finish off this um, this first part about um, designing uh, styles and to uh, save layer files and definitions um, and reuse them, etc. I just want to say a couple of things about the style manager. Because basically, if we design something, whether it's a new symbol or it's a new color ramp or a new label style, um, these new uh, designs are automatically saved into the style, uh, the default style of RGS, which is tied to us as a user. Now, how can you uh, get a, get an idea of what uh, what's going on in that uh, in that style? If we go to uh, function uh, the, the the menu option customize and then to the style manager you can see here that we have the current style is actually indeed uh, ourselves working 
uh, at the moment uh, with uh, within this style under our own name and if we uh, expand the style we can see all the different items in that have to do with um, the symbology of uh, of our uh, layers and, and layouts we can see that they all have their own uh, entries here and we see that we have here a yellow uh, folder with color ramps and it is because we actually created a color ramp and uh, we designed it we gave it a name and this color ramp um, is not part of this uh, of our style so to say so here we can um, copy it to other uh, styles we can delete we can rename etc etc or we can just directly redesign and just uh, remember that everything that you add to your uh to your um your uh your, your map design or your your layer symbology is actually uh visible here and it is sa saved into your personal style that will be uh that will be used every time that you create a new map document um now what is interesting is that you can um you can um, go and look for other styles so if we click on uh, the styles uh, button we can we have here a whole set of default styles and we could for example say well we want um, styles for um, conservation and if we uh, click OK then we see it's added here now and it gives us a set of specific north arrows a set of specific colors which already are uh, tied to a specific um, legenda item fill symbols line symbols marker symbols and uh, this will become apparent that we added this style if we now go into for example this uh, this point um, layer we go for properties and we look at the symbols now we see that we have a whole range of conservation um, a whole range of symbols which are actually in this conservation style um, so yeah th this is how you can uh, can um, turn them on and off and as you can see create new style um, or add style to list what we actually can do is we can create a new style say well this is a uh, I don't know um, for, uh, for for printed books and I want another style for maps posters or what have you and I'm going to create a default set of symbols and colors and color ramps that I will use this is how you can go about it you can create a new style you can what you then make actually is a dot a style a file so this file extension is actually dot style and then of course if you created this you can also send it to other people you can copy it to another computer so you can use this style uh, every time you, uh, you you work on a different location and these styles just for your information are here uh, stored under your name app data roaming s3 desktop 10.7 arc map and we have here uh, all the style files so yes um i'll turn it off because it creates a whole lot of symbols that I will actually not use so it's just uh, going to take up uh, space in my uh, my interfaces um, uh, but yeah this is how you can uh, can go about uh, working with styles now with this I uh, come to the end of this uh, this part and what I will now uh, will go back to is where we left off in the first video with the map design and now I want to expand on the concept of map design um, with the concept of uh, using, creating um, and reusing templates. Okay, in order to engage with this topic, I will uh, return to the layout view that we have been uh, using before. Um, so we have this, uh, this simple map design and I will uh, make this uh, a little bit more complicated to show what we can do with uh, making a, a layout design okay now before uh, going into this map and changing or showing how you can adjust all these uh, different uh, map elements such as the scale bar uh, I want to show a an important um, uh, 
possibility of uh, of ArcGIS and working with uh, with map layouts, which is uh, working with data frames. Now, I uh, I already mentioned in the first uh, first video that you can organize your data in a map by data frame. And actually, this item here, which is saying layers, is what uh, in ArcGIS is a data frame, and this directly refers to this frame. So this is the data frame that all the elements, um, all the layer uh, information is within this data frame and all these map elements are connected to this data frame. Now, and um, you may have seen this coming, but what's interesting is that we can add another data frame. Um, let's do that. And now we have a new data frame. And this data frame is actually also here. Change the name, of course. Um, well, let's uh, let's call it now inset, and I will explain uh, shortly uh, why we call it like this. Um, but this is now uh, sorry. this is now a data frame. If you use want to do something with that data frame, make sure you have the right one selected. So you can now select these data frames. Maybe I wish switch off the uh, AHN file to make it a bit more clear. And as you can see, now that I select this data frame, it's also bold in our layer of contents, a table of contents, and I can double click here and set this to active. Um, this data frame, activate, and now this is my active data frame. So, um, now, what, what can we do with this data frame? We can use it to organize data in our table of contents. If we would like to have the same data, uh, but completely different organized. But when it comes to uh, our map layout, um, it's interesting because we can, for example, use different zoom levels. Um, and let's say that we would be interested in our larger map to uh, visualize a single uh, trial trench that was dark, uh, but we want to uh, in this inset show the total um, organization of, uh, of trial trenches area. Now, in order to do that, um, first of all, I, in this data frame, I want to zoom in on a specific um, trial trench, and uh, we can use this navigation tools for this. Uh, let's say I want to go back to this um, trench 31. Um, now uh, I need to remember which one it was, but let's go and uh, select in this. Uh, oh no, I have it here, of course. Let's go for that one. Let's turn these off. Let's turn the uh, finds off. Now I have here my trench 31. This is uh, not a really exciting. Um, trial trench, but um, it serves uh, the purpose. I will give it a, uh, a nice symbology, uh, which we can then use in our uh, legend. Uh, so I want to go for categories and we're well, uh, doing all these, uh, these things before. Um, I will go to um, the interpretation. I want something that resembles the color of the ground. Let's see if this is clear enough. I click OK. So yeah, this is, this is I think it's clear enough. Um, we just assume that people understand what these um, uh, terms, these abbreviations mean. I don't think I have any clear um, description, or maybe I should just use the four art over here. Maybe that is clearer. If I would use that uh, for um, uh, the symbology, um, well, for the symbology it doesn't matter, but for labeling in any case. Uh, so let's go for that. Okay, let's see if that's going to be. That is useful. Um, no, okay, I don't want the labels in the map now. I want the labels as part of the legend. So I will not use the labels. So I will go into the symbology and I will select. Is the right one? Of these are the abbreviations. So I will hear the written out terms. And now I'm a bit puzzled. 
why um, I'm not getting the text that is in the uh, attribute table. Okay, yeah, so this is a bit weird, um, but my best guess is that because these fields are uh, completely similar in names, um, assuming that the caps are ignored, um, it is um, not not seeing a difference between the two fields, and it apparently just uh, has the field with the abbreviations uh, set as the field to which the term for eyes is referring to. So well, let's just uh, step over this and accept that we will have the abbreviations in the legend. So I will uh, we will go for this um, visualization. Okay, so um, what do we want more? Um, maybe we want labels so we can have the uh, numbers of our um, features visualized so i will go back label in the same way and then set this to number okay okay that's nice okay and let's say that we now want the um, inset to show where this particular trench is in the larger uh, uh, whole of trial trenches now, in order to visualize that, we can um, take this uh, spore art layer 1, which is uh, a layer uh, that, that shows the locations of all the trial trenches, and we can go to inset and we can paste the layer over here. Now, it's uh, not set to, uh, to show, so if I click this, um, all these uh, elements show and they, uh, they scale uh, to within the maximum extents within the, uh, the data frame. Now, um, I do not really uh, care for the uh, classifications or the, the symbology with these trial trenches. So uh, in order to, uh, to make that uh, inset a little bit more uh, neat, I can go to the properties, symbology, and I will just go for features and I will make them all black. So we are basically left with a representation of the uh, trial trenches as a uh, simple shape. But I wanted navigation on the, uh, on the map sheet actually. And now you see I have a very uh, uh, simplified version of the uh, of the, the trial trench um, organization. Now maybe I also want to uh, show the uh, for Harding, so let's add that as well. Gray. So and then maybe we uh, we could also we would also want to have our uh, HN data in the uh, in the other data frame. So I'll paste that one as well switch it on but still I want a, uh, a modest inset just to give an overview and not give any other data than just the, the overview of our data so this could be for example uh, the uh, the design for uh, for the inset and now of course we need to make sure that the viewer of the map understands where this trial trench is actually located in the overview now, in order to uh, to show that there is this um, this property of a data frame in, that in which you can show the extent of another data frame. So, if I uh, go for um, the properties of an inset data frame, I have here the uh, the extent indicator tab. Now, I can uh, add the extent indicator to this data frame, and it will then show the extent of the other data frame. So if I insert now the um, data, the the extent indicator of layers, I can say um, I want to show the frame. Um, so yeah, we could use frame, maybe make it a bit more subtle. Uh, indeed, red I think is a good color to indicate. Um, and let's see if this uh, if this works now. Click OK. We do apply and now you see here appearing indeed a, uh, a rectangle and the area of this rectangle is exactly 
uh, the geographical extent of this rectangle over here. So in this way, um, uh, you can you can show the relationship between um, the different data frames uh, in your uh, in your layout. Okay, so up to so far about uh, data frames and uh, and the way you can uh, you can use them. Now let's go over to the to the rest of the, the map elements. Uh, just very quickly, let's look at the north arrow. Um, yeah, what 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 is there to say about the north arrow? We can adjust the style of north arrows, of course, different um, uh, default um, symbols we have for that. Um, we can also click on the symbol button over here, and then we can actually make this into anything that we want. And again, we are now searching in all styles. We can uh, also um, add uh, style references and then also, of course, our own designs um, add to the, to the set of symbols that we can use. We can also edit the symbol directly. We can even um, uh, draw, we can open uh, files uh, for scaling vector graphics, for example. Well, there, there's an enormous amount of um, possibilities here. Uh, to change um, the north arrow or the symbol uh, you, you would be using to point to the north to your liking. Okay, now then about the scale bar. Now, um, I'm not very happy with the scale bar uh, for various reasons. First of all, um, I don't think uh, indicating kilometers is very useful because we are looking at uh, the geographical extent of this data frame is really small. Um, so I don't think that's very useful. We could measure it and see this trial trench in itself is 25 meters. So indicating those distances in kilometers gives us uh, all these um, decimal values, which are uh, a bit um, uh, unnecessarily uh, unnecessary uh, complexity. And furthermore, um, the uh, uh, scale bar is automatically adjusted on our zoom level which means that it takes on uh, a value that respects the size of the scale bar um, but changes the units that, that, that makes for uh, very um, irregular uh, distances between uh, the uh, sub ranges the subdivisions of the, uh, the scale bar which again makes uh, the whole uh, purpose of the scale bar a bit uh, difficult on this map because how are you going to uh, to easily uh, use this indication that this distance from the zero to to here at the end is 0 0.022 kilometer i mean this is not a really easy tool uh, that, that adds uh, useful information to your map so for these reasons i would want to show to uh, show you how to change the behavior of the tailboard and, and make it into something a bit more so how can we uh, go about that? Um, I'll select it by double clicking. Um, and what I want to do is I want to adjust the number of divisions when I resize and not the value. Now if I click OK um, and I will now resize it, you can see that the, uh, the units actually stay the same. Um, but if I make it smaller, the number of divisions will just change. This is the first step. Um, so I will not have any uh, 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 real-time uh, changeable uh, unit uh, values anymore. Now the second thing is to set those unit values then to something that is, uh, is useful. So I think uh, Let's go from division units from kil kilometers to meters. Um, and then change this to, for example, 5 meter. And let's see what happens then. Okay, so now I have something that to me is a much more useful uh, scale bar. Um, because it gives me units that, uh, that, that are easy to read. Um, it makes sense uh, as uh, as a unit five meters, and then here we have these four subdivisions. Number of subdivisions over here, and of course the number of divisions now set to automatic. 
because that depends on how large or how small I make the area scale bar. Now and then of course you can uh, adjust the numbers and the marks and the format and the frame size and position. A lot of options to play with to completely uh, tweak this to your liking. Um, Now, and then finally about the legend, um, well, I think the first thing to say is that it's now quite small, uh, so we want to increase its size. Maybe we want to, the, to change the uh, location of the legend uh, to a place where we have a lot of white space. Um, and uh, I, I'm not really happy with this, uh, with a few things. So we have here all other values, so what thing that doesn't really... Um, interest me because it's th this green um, category is not even visible on this map. I also do not care much for a two column uh, setup so I would like to have a single column and I maybe want to uh, to change the, the term uh, into an English term so the for interpretation into the English interpretation. Uh, so yeah I, I want to change uh, a couple of things uh, about this legend, so let's double click and see how we can do that. Um, so, general, we have the title, we have all the items which are in our legend, we have um, the items over here, and I can uh, apply settings to the selected items, and then I have uh, layout, frame, size, and position. Okay, so and the things I want to change uh, here are in the item step. So I want to go back to a single column setup. And if I uh, I have to select the correct um, item here in the uh, in, in this list of possible items for the legend, of course, I will go back to column count to one. And I want to uh, select a different style, uh, maybe. Um, and I could just go for layer name and description. So you can see that here you have all kinds of different styles where you have different, um, let's say, a configuration of layer names, headings, labels, and how they are placed uh, alongside each other. So let's see if I select this, how this plays out for my legend. Okay, apparently I selected a, a layout now. Uh, we do not have the column name anymore, but we now have the layer name as a, a heading over here that is not really useful, and we have no more labels. So um, I selected a style which is actually not really useful. So let's see uh, if I get this one. What it gives me is that this is supposed just a color and a, a label. So indeed, so now this is legend and I have here all other values. Now what I could do then in turn is to change the term legend, which everybody understands it's a legend, to something that I uh, want to uh, point out about the colors and the labels, and that is that they represent the interpretation. So let's go for that and click OK. And now I have uh, in the interpretation single column. The only thing I want to get rid of is this all other values uh, entry. And the easiest way to go about this is to go uh, again into the uh, properties of the legend. And then we have here the, the map extent options. What we can set here is only show classes that are visible in the current map extent. Well, that's very convenient um, because uh, this all other values actually is not uh, visible in this map extent. So if I hit the tick box and click OK, I have to do it for the right layer, of course. Then you see that the uh, the all other values entry uh, uh, disappears. Maybe uh, using correct English is also uh, a good uh, good idea. 
Okay, and then we are left with this final problem of the uh, the labels, which are now abbreviations, uh, which uh, is not really clarifying uh, for someone uh, looking at this uh, at this map and this type of uh, classification for the first time. So let's see if we can solve this. And the most straightforward way to solve this is to actually go into the uh, uh, layer itself in the table of contents, go to the properties. And as you may remember from our classification, is that we have here the value and then the uh, colors of the unique value. But we also have here the label that we can uh, change. So if we, for example, we ch want to change this, and this is uh, Dutch, this is cow, uh, which is, um, let's say, which is itch. So if I would now set this to ditch and I'll accept it. Now that you see that this is real time updated in my Legenda. So, um, and this again shows that um, everything that you do in this map, although you're, you're, you're working on the graphical and the aesthetical part of uh, um, making a, a useful and informative map, the elements are always directly drawing their information from your GIS, um, which is strength because it will directly update in case you change it. Okay, now finally to uh, to finish this map, I also want to uh, insert two more things. Uh, one of it is very simple. I just want to have a uh, a title for my uh, map, and I want this to uh, be trench thirty one. Okay, so there it is. Now it's quite a modest title, so of course we are going to. Uh, to change it a bit, so let's make it another symbol. Now we can go here for a preset um, uh, styles. So let's go for this one and make it a little bit bigger. Let's go for a bold version of that. And that's rather okay. And maybe, uh, of course, you can change here the font types and um, you can uh, again edit the symbols and. Uh, do a whole bunch of uh, stuff with it. You can uh, change the station of it, etc., etc. But for now, um, I'm quite happy with this uh, this title. And now I want to add one more piece of information because uh, what's often also uh, besides the scale bar can be very useful, or in addition to the scale bar, is to actually uh, show the the grid. Uh, of your data frame, so you can uh, have this set of uh, ticks on the outside of your uh, your frame that show um, uh, the coordinates, for example, of uh, of the frame. So let's see uh, how we can do this for uh, in ArcGIS. And this is then again a function of the data frame. So if we double click on the data frame, well, let's go to properties. Uh, what we then have here is the uh, grids. Of now, this is uh, what in RGS is called a reference grid. It's drawn on top of the data frame in layout view only. So indeed, this is not happening in your map uh, view, but only in our layout view. Now, what we what can we we now use? We have three options, so we can go for the graticule which is um, a division uh, of your map by meridians and parallels. What well, that is interesting if you are working on a large scale, but not really in our map. And then we have two options, a measured grid, in which your uh, grid lines indicate uh, coordinates of your coordinate reference system. Or you can create a reference grid. And that is more useful because then, for example, you will have sheets uh, your map device, uh, divided in sheets, and then you have um, a simple reference system. Web. So you could point out, for example, in a text in sheet uh, 2D, you can see this or that uh, particular feature. But what we want to do now is we want to create a mesh grid. Okay, now what do we want? Do we want a grid uh, covering our co whole map? I find it always quite distracting, so I, I'd rather have. Um, a tick marks and labels. Now you can also go for a 
labels only, but I think uh, for our mid tick marks, uh, tick marks and labels are, are fine. Um, next, uh, defaults, and we now define this uh, this grid, and let's hit apply. Now, if we accept this, we can see we have our markers here. We have a coordinates, so these coordinates are already uh, neatly oriented, so uh, they are not horizontally next to your map and sticking out of the page, so to say. And uh, we have uh, a single coordinate for every um, tick, because of course, on a horizontal line in a Cartesian coordinate reference system, we do not have any need for repeating the same y value on the axis and vice versa. So you only see on the uh, on the y-axis the changing x value and uh, and vice versa, and um, yeah, it's already uh, designed in a, in a rather pleasing way, not too dominant and uh, readable. And then you could of course go on and tweak this. Maybe we want we want to get rid of the uh, markers in the drawing. So let's see how we can do that. Yeah, so and we can do that by going into the properties of the data frame. We have our, our measured grid. We can go onto the properties and we can uh, here set all the, the properties. And then if we have lines, um, well, this was the one we uh, selected for in the beginning, of course. Of course so this is a grid of lines. And we have a grid of ticks, and we do not want to show any lines or ticks. So if we select that, now we only have these coordinate um, uh, indicators at the outside of our uh, data frame. So yeah, I will I will leave it with this. I'm I'm quite happy with this uh, this map. Um, and let's say I I not only want to use this map and now export it as a as an illustration, which is a functionality I've already been demonstrating in the first video. But it would be to go to export map. Then you can set here uh, what file extension you would like, resolution, width, etc. Um, but I won't go through all that because that has been uh, already explained. But let's say um, I want to. Uh, I'm so happy with this uh, with this design, and actually I have uh, an enormous number of uh, of trial trenches to visualize. So let's say I have to make an extensive um, report in which every individual trench gets its own map and um, then I would have to repeat this design over and over again now of course a way to do that is to stay within this um, this map and just uh, navigate in this way to other uh, well I'm now skipping it on of course that this is only trench 31 so then I would have to uh, Turn on another um, layer, and I could I could actually go on and on and um, uh, make sure that so this would be better. Now um, I could just change the, uh, the spatial extent every time to cover a trial trench, but um, then we would still be changing uh, uh, the layout of this project. And actually, what I want to do is I want to keep this project as it is. I want to save it as it is and I just want to reuse the layout as a template for other maps okay so in order to show how we can uh, create a template out of this map uh, I reset it to the original uh, and, um, and data and the simple process of creating a template in uh, ArcGIS is as follows so we select save as as an option and then we go to the uh, folder in which the templates are actually uh, stored. Uh, and for that, we have to select our uh, username. Uh, we go to application data. We go to roaming, Esri, desktop 10.7, art map. Now, we were here already earlier when we were storing these .style files. Um, we were not seeing them because we only uh, see uh, MSD files. So template, you can see that we have already here a, uh, a template. And I want to uh, create another one. 
So let's say this is the trench map template. And I click um, save. And now, in fact, we created a template. And we can show this by now clicking on a new file. Um, and what we have here is we can start a blank map. We can start with a template um, that is actually template based on the uh, visualization, uh, the layout that we had before, and now we have this, uh, this strange map. Now it is of course useful to have a thumbnail instead of just a name, uh, so you have a little bit of extra visual reminder of uh, what you're about. Now I'll show you how you can get this, uh, this thumbnail, for then you have to go into File, App Document Properties, and here you can see this uh, this button over here that thumbnail. So if we do that, we click OK, and now we repeat the process. So we save as and we right location, of course, and now we hit save. We overwrite, and we would now start a new map. We can see that we have this uh, strange map template ready for us to uh, to go and work with. Now. Um, what we can also do is we can um, change the template, uh, so the layout, uh, as, we, uh, as we are working. And I will show you how to do that. And we can do this by going to the uh, layout toolbar. And here we have um, the option change layout. So if I click on the change layout option in this toolbar, and I would, for example, select the layout that I created of our previous design. Click next. I can say um, how I want the layout to match with the items I have in my map over here. Um, so yeah, this is fine. Um, I'm, I'm just going uh, to apply this to my layers, and I click finish. Um, now nothing much happened here because uh, the we didn't really, uh, we, we had other data in the data frame, so now everything is applied to the data I have here. Um, but what we can see is that this um, legend now returns to the state that we uh, adjusted and we have the scale bar, uh, which is again in the state that we adjusted. Um, so yeah, we, this is actually the, the layout uh, that we had before we started creating this new layout. Um, now and we can change back I guess this has to so this is the insert in the finish and now we select it for the other uh, template and now we have our map back so yeah it's clear that once you created these templates you can uh, always um, well just uh, invoke them uh, when you are working or you can start working from them and because we know where, where they are saved, they are just MQD files, which will work as a template as long as they are stored in that location on your computer. Uh, you can also send these, uh, these designs to someone else and he will, or she will have available. Or you can store them on a central location for a company or, uh, or university. And you can use these, uh, these templates in this way. Okay, and so with this uh, demonstration of uh, working with templates, we've come to the end of the fourth and final video in which I have been introducing um, RGS 10.7.1. And in this final video, we've been looking at uh, styles, at uh, designing color ramps, working with style manager, uh, layer definitions, and changing and saving layer definitions, and finally with. Uh, map layouts in terms of, uh, of templates. So there it is. Um, I thank you for, uh, for watching and listening.